Dame Marguerite sends a message to the Prime Minister. Well, I come tonight just to set the record straight. A police-involved shooting leaves a man dead. Plus, we take a look at San Salvador's economy. In San Salvador, the economy has been relatively strong. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Spending your Saturday evening with us. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Hubert Ingram reached out to Progressive Liberal Party supporters, reminding them that he came out of the belly of the PLP and that he was former Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pindling's most illustrious protege. Last night, Day Marguerite Pindling took issue with Ingram's attempt to use her late husband's words to further his campaign. Christina McNeil reports. It was before a crowd of thousands on Clifford Park Friday night that Dame Marguerite Pinling cleared the air and provided context surrounding the words of her late husband, Sir Lyndon Pinling, during his farewell speech in the House of Assembly. And lest we forget the most illustrious protege of mine thus far, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. <laughs> Taking the stage last night, Dame Marguerite told the crowd she heard about the Prime Minister's use of Sir Lyndon's farewell address, during which Ingram was referred to as his most illustrious protege to date. According to Dame Marguerite, those words, to date, reveal the context surrounding that comment. In trying to be gracious to Mr. Ingram in his farewell address to Parliament, Sir Lyndon did indeed refer to Mr. Ingram as his most illustrious protege to date. But the key words there are to date. You see, when Sir Lyndon spoke those words, Hubert had already become Prime Minister for five years. Perry at that time had not even become leader of the PLP yet. So it was true that at that point in time, when Sir Lyndon spoke, Hubert, of all his Sir Lyndon's protégés, has risen to has had risen to more illustrious heights than any of the other protégés. With those words, Dame Marguerite says Sir Lyndon was not indicating a preference of Ingram over current PLP leader Perry Christie. Rather, she says Christie was Sir Lyndon's chosen successor, and she added, even Sir Cecil Wallace Whitfield's choice for leader of the FNM, not Ingram. She sent this message to the Prime Minister last night. Well, what I want to know, Mr. Ingram, and I want you to look at me when I'm talking to you. And I want you to put your cap on straight. What I want to know is, Mr. Ingram, is this. If my late husband, the father of our nation, made you his heir, why did you then, then turn around and treat him so badly. Christie added that the FNM under Ingram has not lived up to Sir Lyndon's legacy. He was referring to the recent Arawak Key Port deal, which Christie referred to as one of the biggest scandals in Bahamian history. Christie asked PLP supporters to take a closer look at the port deal and who really stands to benefit from the port. He contends that only 19 families stand to gain from the deal, although hundreds of Bahamians were enticed to buy shares. Can you imagine the audacity of doing these dastardly deals behind the scenes and then claiming Sir Lyndon Pending's legacy? This is the opposite of everything Sir Lyndon Pinling fought for. This Arawak, this Arawak poor deal represents the biggest setback for Sir Lyndon's legacy possible. Couldn't you, well listen, you could not ask for clearer contrast between the PLP and the FNM. Christie invited supporters to continue the journey Sir Lyndon and his colleagues started 60 years ago. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. 
Well, social media was flooded with comments following Dame Marguerite's remarks last night, but what we wanted to know was what you, the viewers, thought about the FNM and PLP leaders continuously referencing the late Sir Linding at their rallies. And as usual, we received varied responses. Vincent Marshall says Sir Linden is a part of Bahamian history, but he has no relevance based on the context in which they're using him during this time. He says, I feel as though there are too many issues that need to be addressed for the nonsense that we allow to go on at these rallies. Well, Vagabond agrees that Sir Linden did a lot to lay the foundation for the development of the nation, but he says he's now resting. He says it's time for today's leaders to build their own legacies and stop relying on Sir Linden's memory to draw emotions from the electorate. And Lincoln Deal asks, do you think President Obama focuses on George Washington? He says this is a new era and we need to focus beyond independence and work on transforming our country for the next generation. Well, according to Nash Evans, Mr. Christie and Mr. Ingram can fit into one of Sir Lyndon's shoes. She thinks it's time for them to put him to rest forever. However, Janice Johnson thinks he is relevant because of all he has done for the Bahamas. It links the past to this very moment. And J.P. Mickelson agrees. He says Sir Lyndon will always have relevance. Generations from now, we will still look at his history as he was a big part of that history. What Sir Lyndon did goes far beyond politics. He was a game changer, something that has not been done since. As always, guys, thanks for those comments. Well, last night we reported that Brookfield Asset Management is officially the owner of Kersner International's Paradise Island properties. And while both the government and Kersner International officials seem pleased with the deal, there's still uncertainty among Bahamians about whether the new owners will stick to these conditions. The government approved the deal on three conditions, that Brookfield retain a minimum staff complement of 8,000 Bahamians, that it invests at least $50 million in the Atlantis Resort annually, and that it maintain the current level of resort brand marketing. But Bahamians are concerned that the Canadian conglomerate will not stay true to its word, and scores of Bahamians will lose their jobs. However, Minister of Tourism Vincent Van Der Poel Wallace yesterday discussed the repercussions that could result if Brookfield does not stick to the conditions set out in the deal. And I don't have the specifics uh, from memory on that, um, but certainly that was a condition of the deal, so I expect there will be uh, some repercussions if those uh, conditions aren't met. But precisely what they are, um, I don't recall at the moment, because they, they were agreed quite readily and quite easily up front, so it really wasn't something that we were overly concerned about. Well, I think it's a... a great indication of their sincerity that they have agreed to the criteria presented right. by the government. If somebody was uh, th thinking that they had another goal, you wouldn't agree to the three key financial metrics that were in the Prime Minister's request for government approval. So I would also let you know that we as a management team on Ireland have met with our Brookfield representatives nu numerous times over the last 19 months and we've only been impressed with the professionalism and the desire to succeed here, the concern for all of the employees who work here. It's just really been amazing. And with the multi-billion dollar Baja Mar Resort being constructed, there have been rumors that the lenders are nervous about the impact of competition. Those rumors have raised concerns about Brookfield pulling out of the deal early. The owners they haven't specified that they <coughs> intend to leave next week or two years from now or ten years from now. They have a collection of global <coughs> assets. Many of them are iconic. The, when you asked about are the lenders nervous, I was going to ask you who's lenders, but you pointed out it's ours. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think so. You know, this has been a very successful brand for a very long time. If the owners or the lenders were nervous, I'm not sure that they would have agreed to some very serious financial metrics that we discussed earlier and which the Prime Minister listed in his announcement. And when asked if Atlantis's Paradise Island properties will undergo any major changes now that they're under new leadership, Mark Antonis says they will keep their look, only making improvements to the properties. And he revealed that they've already started with capital investments for this year. About one month ago, we initiated the renovation of the Royal Towers, the first half, the first wing. That's been our iconic towers in opening in 1998, as you know. We're kicking it off. We're going to do 600 of those rooms this year. 
and the other wing roughly 600 next year. And next year we will start with the Cove, doing the first half of the Cove. Brookfield has about $150 billion in assets under management and more than 100 years experience owning and operating assets with a focus on real estate, infrastructure, renewable power and private equity. In other news, an alleged robbery suspect was shot dead by police last night. Police say they received information that a man involved in a robbery and shooting was at Fleming Street near the clinic around 11 p.m. When police got there, they say they saw a man fitting the description of the suspect. And as officers approached the suspect, he produced a handgun, which resulted in him being shot dead by police. Police reportedly recovered a handgun along with a quantity of ammunition from the body of the man.